From In the Beginning to the Musical Apocalypse, this is The Bible Says What? I'm your host, Mike Wiseman. Before we begin today's regularly scheduled program, I have a backlog of patrons to thank. Love me, three times patron Michaela. Thanks for all the extra love and support. Your stickers are in the mail. And new friends of the show, Elevate, Rachel Benson, and Susanna Juby. Thank you for helping keep the recording light on. You too can be immortalized in BSW history by going to patreon.com forward slash BSW the podcast and signing up to be a supporter of the show. Your episodic tithes of a dollar or more will get you early access to each episode by three days, stickers, shirts, and shout outs. That's patreon.com forward slash BSW the podcast. That being said, I was going through the OG Genesis curses and realized man's punishment was piff compared to the others. Man's curse consists of Yahweh cursing the ground, not man specifically, but the ground will now grow thorny things, the ground from which both men and women have to work. That's the end of his punishment. Even the snake, however, were dealt with more severe punishments specific to them. The snake. First, Yahweh chose to curse all the animals on the planet. He then decided to punish the snake specifically. All snakes lost their legs, their ability to talk, and now have to eat dirt. Women were cursed with painful childbirth, being stuck with their husbands, and animosity towards serpents. Punishments were formulated for all humans and animals. Then specific ones are set up for all snakes and all women. Man was never cursed specifically. The best part, all of these curses on humans have been bypassed by progress. We no longer have to sweat and struggle to grow food. Women have the option to use drugs during childbirth, taking away the pain the loving Christian deity intended for them to endure. Technology and grocery stores have made Yahweh's over-the-top curses null and void. Why would anyone want to worship such an incompetent monster? Let's start the show. Is there anything in the Bible that you yourself have an issue with? <laughs> Okay, so it took you reading the Bible to realize that those things were bad for you? Yeah, it actually did. I, I didn't you figure this out on your own? No, Ted, Ted Bundy could be redeemed. God doesn't kill children. Does, what, what do you think the Passover was? Yahweh sets up a whole system in the Old Testament where you slaughter animals just so he's able to forgive you. Today's special guest is Christian transformational speaker and therapist, Miriam Matthews. Welcome to the show, Miriam. Thank you so much. It's so great to be on, Michael. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for coming on. Tell us a little bit about what you do. So I, as you said, I am uh, a speaker, I am a therapist, I'm a Christian transformational coach. Um, I work with women and uh, essentially what I do is uh, help them understand their behaviors or change their behaviors hmm. by understanding the beliefs that we have and challenging those beliefs. Um, because hmm. many times the beliefs that we acquire or accumulate over time, um, are representative of the experiences that we've had in childhood, you know? So then we just grow up replicating um, similar uh, experiences and, um, you know, and reach hmm. roadblocks. And, you know, we experience the same cycles maybe that our parents experience, whether in our finances or our hmm. relationships and uh, they, they're ready to change it. Hmm. You know, they get frustrated uh, with their actions. And uh, but many times, again, it's the behaviors that are related to the belief. So we hmm. we get in the nitty gritty um, under the hood. I say, everybody, uh, if you have a head, you have mental health, you know, and essentially <laughs> it's like you have you have a car, you know, your body is this vessel. So we we get under the hood together. Yeah. Hmm. Awesome. <laughs> that sounds fun. So how long <laughs> you been doing this? Oh, I um. I've been doing this for about 10 years now, but I actually started my private practice three years ago in the middle of the pandemic. Oh, uh, my timing. husband is in the <laughs> yeah, great timing, right? My <laughs> husband's well, yeah. And it, the mental health, the demand for mental health actually like just went through the through. roof, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it, there's always been a need, 
you mm -hmm. know, for for uh, individuals to receive help, you know, whether it's therapy, whether it's coaching. Um, but sometimes it's that stigma uh, that is associated with needing help that inhibits mm -hmm. people. But it, yeah, that time frame and, you know, not being around loved ones or and not mm -hmm. being able to socialize or get out and and even sometimes do the things that not only are healthy to do, but sometimes people would also um, escape from their issues, you know, by mm -hmm. utilizing those things. Those things were not there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there unfortunately, there was also increase in um uh, relationship issues many times. So it's like, well, now I'm I'm home with the with the spouse or with my partner. Yeah. You know, now the kids are at home and they drive me crazy. You know, there was an increase <laughs> in CPS. You know, CPS mm. referrals, child yeah. protective services. So uh, it just shows that many times we're lacking um, just the the skills to have healthy relationships. Even you mm. know, um, you know, so the 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 chaos is is also reflective of the chaos in our minds and we need help and we need cultivation with that so yeah i started it during that time my husband's in the military um and i had been used to working for someone and i said you know i'm just going to jump you know 10 feet in and it's it's been <laughs> it, it was it was like ah it was a little shaky at first um mm -hmm. but uh, i've also grown in confidence i've um mm -hmm. allowed myself to cultivate and um, and that's also because of, of God, you know, interesting. Yeah. So how, how does, thanks for that. I appreciate that. How yeah. does God fit into the, um, the therapy part of it? Okay. Um, so, so it, many people, um, in, in their walk with God hmm. are in different parts of their journey. You know, um, some people come to me uh, specific, you know, specifically for Christian counseling. Um, mm -hmm. Others may not. Um, so I meet them where they are, just like God has met me <laughs> where I was when I was, you know, um, a hot mess. You know, <laughs> he 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 didn't treat me like that. You know, he 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 he, he mm -hmm. saw me. Um, in a way that I am not too much for him to handle. And even if I counted myself out, like many of, of people do, um, he didn't count me out. And as a matter of fact, huh. everything that I have grown through, gone through, I've grown through it because I invested in therapy, I invested in counseling, and I've mm -hmm. been able to show up uh, in a purposeful way um, and be a light in somebody's darkness. So it's... So the way he shows up is I'm the salt and the light, you know, there's mm. a scripture, uh, Michael, that says the spirit of man um, is the candle of the Lord. Mm. You know, um, I even think about, I don't know if you, you, you probably know this because of the, just the variety of people that you speak to, but when Mary was pregnant, um, with Jesus and, you know, the Holy spirit, I mean, was, was inside of her. She went to go visit Elizabeth, who was also pregnant with John the Baptist. And, um, she, Mary didn't express, Hey, by the way, I'm, I'm pregnant, you know, with, with God or the son of God. Uh, however, just by Mary's just mere her presence and, and what she was carrying and God, you know, she was carrying, you know, Jesus, uh, Elizabeth reacted not by her Mary's response, but literally by the presence of her. She said, oh my God, you are, you are, you are blessed. You're carrying the son of God. Even the baby in me is rejoicing, you know? <laughs> so just me showing up in, in my sessions, me being the light, um, God shows up, Interesting. you know? And then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's definitely how the story went. I remember, I remember that, that part of the story. Very interesting. Yes. Um, Lots there, lots there. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Yes. So I, I, I'm. Oh my goodness. Where do we go? Where do we go? Needing yeah. help. I, I wrote down needing help. Um. So these people need help. Are, are they, are they Christians mostly that come to you, that need help? Oh um, no, it's, I would say it's fifty fifty. Gotcha. You fifty know. fifty. Um. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. Not not everyone comes in and says, okay, yeah, it's Christian counseling that I want. There's hmm. some individuals that uh, maybe were Christians in the past, but they experienced 
um, uh, some church related trauma and they actually mm. got away from the faith. Um, you know, I'm even thinking about someone in particular now, but yeah, there, there are actually quite a few, many people mm. that have experienced some sort of church hurt or church trauma is what I mm. like to call it, that, uh, were actually a part of a cult or, uh, mm you know, just felt shunned or ostracized and they got away from the faith. But, you know, there's still mm. something in them that that drove them my way. And I believe that something was God um, that, you know, that it's like, oh, Miriam, I, I don't want you to indoctrinate me or, you know, I don't want you uh. to force God down my throat. It's like, that's not who God is. You know, we all have free will. So that's not something I, I do anyway. Um, hmm. But yeah, and they're just individuals who are like, I like your bio. Hmm. You know, there's something about your picture, your bio, kind of like Elizabeth and Mary. There's something about you that just gravitates me towards you. And I just feel comfortable and I want to talk to you. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. So how do you handle the ones that are astray, as you say, uh, the ones that have kind of veered off of the church hurt? How do you handle those? How do I handle those the one that are the ones that are stray but already have a relationship with God and are familiar with him? Yeah, that one. Well, we 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 talk about it. We talk about um the their pain because pain mm. that is not mm. acknowledged all right, pain that is not acknowledged or even explored just remains there. Emo another way of me saying it is emotions buried alive don't die, they just accumulate. You know, so sometimes we may think, oh, you know, like I, I <laughs> from a religious mindset, which I've gotten away from religion, I'm more about relationship with Jesus is like, oh, let me just pray for you or something. And it's like prayer is a gr good prescription. But many times we also we need that the practical skills of, you know, let's explore your emotions, because uh, many times we're in experiences or situations where we feel invalidated, we feel dismissed. We didn't feel seen. We feel just misunderstood. Um, so let this be a safe place where we can explore those, explore your feelings because mm. how you feel matters, you mm. know? So it's a, it's a process of being vulnerable again, opening up with somebody again. Uh, you know, you're it's connecting with someone who is safe, you know, who walks uh, in the faith, but I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to cast stones um, at you for, hmm. you know, for stepping away. Let's do this walk together, boo. And then, you know, mm -hmm. and then it's just, it's just a nice uh, healing that takes time. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, so the walk, you, you talk a lot about the walk with God. Yes. Um, now, as far as the counseling goes, um, people are coming to you mm -hmm. instead of God. Why do you think they're coming to you instead of God to fix their problems? Well, there's it, it, <laughs> the first thing that pops up in my mind, Michael, is um, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Hmm. Um, the second thing that pops up in my mind is the children of Israel hmm. cried out to God. But God sent a man. He sent a person. <laughs> But he cried out. Well, we're talking about the 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 slavery one when they're in slavery. Yeah, the slavery yeah, yeah. one. Four hundred yes. years, Miriam. They they cried out to God. Four hundred years, by the way. <laughs> and God's like, okay, okay, I'll send somebody. And then he yeah. sends the wrong guy. No way. Oh, and he's like, okay, I'll send your brother instead. Oh, uh -huh. that's, fun. that's a fun story. <laughs> so, so yeah, counselors you know, so like, are safe. Go ahead. Yeah, counselors are safe. So like I was saying earlier, it's. It, we are the salt and the light of the earth, you know, like God, he, he, the way I see it is he gave us this world on lease. He said, you know, it, be fruitful, you know, dominate. Um, it, it is through, it's, it's through a person many times that they even come to know God. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. So counselors are safe. So this is what I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to get at. So God, God wants to help out everybody. These people are in a relationship with him. God wants to be in a relationship with them. Um, but you're helping out. God is not the one helping out. Um, if we're in a relationship with him and he's like our best friend or dad or support staff, all of the above, mm -hmm. and, but we have to go to a counselor. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to go to a counselor when we have this almighty person, apparently? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So why, why do we have to go counselor? Yeah. So we, I would say don't have to, 
<laughs> you know, not not obligated to. Um, right, right. So no, yeah, no one would be forcing. Even in, that in would counseling, be bad. Yeah. I have people sign a consent form. Yeah, nobody wants a to tele, be a, from a telehealth that. consent form. So it's like, okay, you know, if you want to, if you want to embark on this journey, hey, I, I will absolutely do hmm. with you. Like he, you know, God has given us all gifts. Hmm. All right. So this is, I have a, a gift of of counsel. Now, I also believe because the scripture says in the Bible, um, the Holy Spirit is our counsel. Hmm. Um, however, we're all different. Where we are in our walk with God is is different. There are some things where it's like, okay, well, in, in everything, all right, it's, the, you know, I also lean on the scripture, Michael, that says, seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. But I also ask God to order my steps because, you know, I, I don't know everything. I don't perceive everything that he is, mm -hmm. it may be telling me, or I don't perceive all of the instructions um, that I, I also, I need a person mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So God's not and enough. We need a, a physical person on earth to help us. A physical person on earth to help us. Um, huh. That that God has deposited some knowledge into. Hmm. That I I didn't uh, understand maybe when I read my Bible or uh, again if He huh. um, was trying to show me something in the realm of the spirit during prayer, but I didn't perceive it. I didn't catch it. Perhaps this other person did. Huh. And I'm better able to then capture it and implement it in my life. Interesting. There's even, uh, when we look at the New Testament and Paul, hmm. and I wish I had the reference, but this has also helped me understand this. Because, <clears throat> um, you know, no man is an island to themselves. Paul, Paul says, if you didn't minister, if you didn't open your mouth, if you didn't share the gospel, somebody wouldn't know about the knowledge of God. Huh. So it then it, it then means a person is needed to share. Right. A person is needed That's... to open up. And then we're also connected. Right. Hmm. Interesting. So, I mean, as an all-powerful being um, who knows everything, mm -hmm. um, I would think he'd be better at, at sending you messages himself as opposed to needing somebody else I'm, the whole needing other people thing is a little weird for me for an all-powerful being yeah. you know that wants to have a relationship with me let's let's show up god let's let's you know come down and say hi instead of sending um i don't know jim bob or something you know mm -hmm. <laughs> across the way to say mm -hmm. hi god loves you well why didn't god tell me why does jim bob have to tell me mm -hmm. you know i, I kind of see that with the counselors too god's supposed to be this this almighty counselor it's the holy spirit as well uh, mm -hmm. Supposed to be a helping force of some sort, mm -hmm. um, but we need people. But God needs people in order for this to work. That mm -hmm. just seems a little off to me. Mm -hmm. No, I understand that. I understand that. Yeah. Uh, and it, it just it, it really goes back to where we are in our faith as well. Mm -hmm. I I have certainly not arrived. Uh, everything that the Holy Spirit <laughs> is telling me, I don't capture it all. Um, Weird. Uh, as, Weird. As why, well why do you as think that is? It, as well, you know, it really, it take, well, okay. So we all, um, he said it takes a mustard seed of faith, but that mustard seed mm. of faith doesn't, isn't supposed to just stay a mustard seed. It grows <laughs> over time, you know, gotcha. and we also live in a corrupt world as well, okay. which has impacted our ability to walk with God and receive from God. Limited. It's limited God's powers. It's not limited his powers, but hmm. in, in we're 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 limited, but we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. I <laughs> it, I, it can be, and sometimes it's 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 also we can be so stuck to how it's not going to work that I won't be open minded to how it hmm. could as well. Interesting. Because yes, he is he is complex. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Huh. Why did he tell Jonah, I want you to send this message to Nineveh? You know, and if, if, if Jonah didn't, you know, well, we see what happened with Jonah. Hmm. Jonah finally agrees to it. And the people received God because they were not in a place to even receive him. Hmm. Right. A man came with a message and now they receive God and then they could develop a relationship with God. But even even then. 
um, it, it was mostly it was prophets that are being used. In okay. New Testament, there's still pastors and things like that. But now yeah. Jesus is the mediator where we have the Holy Spirit. But where I am now and understanding what the Holy Spirit is telling me, um, I'm able to pick it up better today than I was even three years ago or even four yeah. years ago. So it's a walk that it grows over time. It's not always even just like this, oh, you know, like I'm, you know, like just walking with God and flying with him each and every day. It was actually been like this for me. <laughs> it's yeah. been like this roller coaster ride. There's sometimes where I, I have doubts. There's sometimes yeah. like, God, did you tell me this? Did you tell me to start a business? Like, what if people reject me? Like, you know, what if people um, persecute me? This is what I dealt with in my past, you know, uh, or even like I've experienced church hurt as well, where, mm. you know, like I, I just had my own experiences where I had a child, yeah. you know, out of wedlock and just different things like that. So it's like, well, who am I to even be in a position? Um, mm. And, you know, th there was one day where I was just in such internal conflict with, I don't know who to trust, where to go. Mm. Um, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to open up my Bible. And I mm. had this, this supernatural experience, Michael, where I literally, I opened it up. And my eyes literally went to Romans 8 and 1. And I remember mm -hmm. it like it was yesterday. Uh, mm -hmm. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I just felt his love in such a tangible way that I had it before even that point. Interesting. And it, that that wasn't that, that wasn't through a person. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I felt persecuted that day. <laughs> <laughs> very persecuted by people that I said, okay, God, it, it really actually made me, sometimes there is pain uh, and offense that arises in our life. And it, for at least for me that day, it did. And then I was able to really press in and receive something that I hadn't received until that day and to know him in a new way that I had it before. To know him in a new way. These are very yeah, interesting absolutely. words you're choosing here. So as far as the the guy who, or the person, sorry, the person that hurt you in the church, mm -hmm. um, that was a physical, actual person. But mm -hmm. then when you needed help, God sent you feelings. He didn't show up as a physical person. He just sent you feelings. Yeah. So How do you know in, those feelings this, came from God? So he didn't send me feelings. He sent me mm -hmm. peace. Okay. Well, that's a feeling. <laughs> I, I, I would feel that as a, that's a feeling. Okay, um, okay. So, I mean, like we can, we can call it whatever you want, but God mm -hmm. sent it to you. Mm -hmm. Um, why did he choose to send you that? Or first off, how do you know it was him? How do I sent know you that? Him? Yeah. Well, up until this point, I got, like, I, I knew about God. Like I had a walk with God as a teenager, as a child. Well, now at that point, like I was an adult. <laughs> and I mean, there are times where I had been experiencing suicidal ideation um, because mm. of just things that people had said mm. It had never like driven, you know, like there are times I, you know, drive down the road and it's like, well, where, where are those thoughts coming from? You mm. know, we, there's also an enemy. Um, huh. There are times where I, I just wanted to just, yeah, just to take my life. I, I didn't, I believe uh, all the while that was also keeping me, you know, like I uh, have, I muster up what the seed of faith to, to, to challenge some of those thoughts as well. So uh, that day, yeah, I mean, I, I was hurt beyond hurt. And I, I, and I, I, I like, God, I, I don't know what to do. You know, I feel like I'm not being accepted. I, you know, like I, I don't, I, I am, I'm fearful. I feel so unloved. I feel so rejected. Hmm. You know, I need a, I need a word. And I think it was more so my, my demand and my pressing on, I need something from you today in order to, to get me through and to hmm. keep walking. So you needed yeah. help. And, and, and so oh, you I read a verse and it, and it gave you peace. I read a verse and I felt a tangible, um, uh, presence. So oh, that presence. Was, okay. I, presence that I, I didn't see. Okay. Didn't see with my own eyes, but I felt. You felt a presence. I felt a presence. And how I does one feel peace. a presence? I've heard this a lot. I feel a presence in the room or something like that. I don't I don't know what that feels like. How does one feel a presence? Well, just like um you may feel there's some people who may feel fear. 
you know, like they may I feel, feel yes. <laughs> like, oh, you know, I don't want to turn the light on because I, I wonder if there's something in my room. Is there something uh -huh. under my bed <laughs> you know, in that same way? Yeah, I remember that feel. running in the bed and, you know, six year old Mike. Oh, yeah. Oh, but I've been at the adult that's like, is there something in my under my bed? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, that. Yeah. And I've that I, I felt his presence. And that the feeling was uh, his presence like, specifically, like, like I, that's the, that's the weird part for me is you oh. felt a presence first off. That's weird. But then, you know, that this present was specifically Jesus. Yes. That's like, that is like so far a big, big gap there that you just jumped. How do we know that this is Jesus? How does that work? How do we know? Uh, yeah. It was, it was peace. It was, it was him talking through his word uh -huh. and it was peace. And a part of it is, so even that, like even being, being able to receive doesn't come from a place of, I am able to completely logically explain this in, in, huh. in, 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 in a way of science and all of that, like make it, it make sense. It, it, it just it, doesn't make sense. It it just, so, yeah, some of it just doesn't make sense. It, that's yeah. exactly, it doesn't yeah. make sense. So it's like putting it, leaning not into your own understanding of how you think it may work, but really being in it. My heart was postured to receive. So I received, I, I, I was able to receive and it was like electricity. I, I don't know. Like it was, it was <laughs> like electricity. Interesting. Your heart yeah. Was not postured. like it hurts. Not in a way that it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but not the painful kind, the good kind, <laughs> the good kind, like the Holy Spirit, and He, the Holy Spirit is with me and visits me. I would say, I would say, visit me, but they, is with me daily. But many times, I feel His presence, like I feel uh, a touch, an actual a tingle, a, a a tingle. Yes, a spider tingle. Uh, my Spider Man tingles are going off. That's what I, I talk to Spider Man. Uh, he he lives okay, in my head. Okay. Uh, he sends me feelings, um, lots of tingles, and mm -hmm. and 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 right directions to go. So how okay. do I know it's Spider Man? Because I know that Spider Man, and I know Spider Man, and that's how he acts. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. Spider Man. Mm -hmm. But he's invisible; nobody else can see him. He just, you know. But he wants mm -hmm. a relationship with everybody. But you got to come to him first. I don't. It just it's 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 a lot of invisible things. And and for me, I I can't be sure that that it's Jesus or Spider-Man or Kalima or any of the millions of other gods out there that mm -hmm. supposedly help people and do things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's, that's my dilemma is trying to figure out who it is. And, mm -hmm. and I talk to a lot of Christians and everyone's very sure that it's Jesus, but we don't know for sure because you can't test it. <laughs> you can't mm -hmm. test that it's Jesus. You can't, mm -hmm. hey, Jesus, is that you? You know, no, no, no mm -hmm. answer. Cause he doesn't answer that way. That's not, that's not how that works. Um, you did mention doubts. I want to get into that for sure. But you you've brought up faith a lot, mm -hmm. and that is that is a very interesting topic. What what is faith to you? What is faith to me? Mm -hmm. So it, it it's me releasing my understanding. Explain. It's me. It's me. Um, not using my reasoning <laughs> so much so that. I'm unable to receive almost like what you're doing. It's like, ah, it's, it's hard for me to understand it because I don't see it. It's invisible. Yeah. And it's because your reasoning is taking up more space than your ability to receive that it's, it's possible. You know, so you want me to pretend it's real and then it'll be real. Not pretend, okay. but be open to the truth that it is real because if you say, okay, genuinely with your heart, Lord, you, 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 you died for me. You rose again, uh -huh. you know, please come into my heart. You will experience him. You will, you will experience the Holy spirit coming into your heart and he will absolutely. The, here's the other thing, Michael. I don't know. Uh, I've done that twice though, Miriam. You Okay. Twice. And, and, and I, I, didn't feel a ghost. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, then like, and there's no, there was no guarantees. There was no for sure. It was, I just went with it, loved my God that I couldn't see. And then, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> finally, eventually somewhere along the line, I, I, I kind of snapped out of it a little bit and mm -hmm. started reading my Bible and figuring things out for myself and doubting. I mean, that's where my doubts came from hundred percent. It's just reading the Bible. 
um, mm-hmm. and coming up with these questions um, and no answers. But it's interesting because even da- Thomas was a doubter. Well, but did Thomas able- know Jesus? Yeah. He, who knew Jesus and he still doubted, you know, yeah, he and, saw Jesus though. Like that's like, different. Yeah, he though. saw Jesus, which is, I think really just, it just speaks to how doubtful we can be, you know, how, so, <laughs> how we can psych ourselves out, even though he's right there, you know, yeah. but it's like, he said, blessed are they that believe and don't see, you know, but at least, Hey, he, he, he got for those who hands. don't, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, are you Jesus? It's like, let me, you know, you see yeah, the holes. Yeah, yeah. Um, who wants to touch my holes? <laughs> What's the touch? Oh, that, was weird. Yeah. that was weird. I don't know what that was. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, it, it was a physical thing. He was actually there. Um, we don't have that. What What is faith to you? Like the, the definition of it? Like, because I have a, a um, man, I can't dictionary. That's the word <laughs> dictionary definition, a strong belief in God or the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. Would you go with that? Spiritual apprehension. Rather, Rather than, proof. than proof. Say that one more time. The whole <laughs> a strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. The spiritual apprehension part is... is yeah, threw me off too. <laughs> I, um, faith I don't get the is... spiritual part to begin with, but the spiritual apprehension, maybe like understand... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So how, how do you take faith? The substance of things hoped for. There it is. And the evidence of things not seen. There it is. Okay. You read and yes. <laughs> and yeah. Have yeah. Yeah. Read yeah. To you. <laughs> Faith so is being in, sure in of believing... what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Yes. Yeah. Hebrews 1, uh, 11, 1. Um, now, believe without seeing. Right. Belief without seeing it. So I'm going to believe that in the next room, there's a stack of pancakes. It doesn't yeah. make it any more real. I'm mm-hmm. just at that point pretending that mm-hmm. there's pancakes in the next room. Mm-hmm. What's the difference between pretending and faith? What is the difference between pretending and faith? Well, faith has to do with truth. Well, it's mm. <laughs> how do you get that? Where, where's that? How, how does faith pertain to truth? Well, Jesus says, okay, I'm I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Uh-huh. All right. So my truth will always override facts. Your truth okay. is also going to override feelings. Your truth. What okay. Not, not, how my, did you come to when your I truth? say my truth, I'm just saying truth. Truth overrides yeah. facts and truth overrides feelings. Right. Um, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't um, uh, s- simplify it because th- this is something that is complex. This is something oh. that takes going beyond reasoning, but belief in what you don't see. So some some of okay. One of the main struggles that I encounter that that not just me but my clients encounter is: mm. Am I good enough? Mm. That may feel it may feel true, may feel like I'm not good enough. People have always told me I'm not good enough. Uh, People have always counted me out. Now I have this belief in my head and, you know, maybe Mm -hmm. I've uh, now I'm addicted to a substance. Now I'm um, abusing alcohol. Now I'm, um, I'm I'm doing these things that also show and solidify this be- go along with this belief in my head of not being good enough. this is my reality Miriam I, you know like this is this is what's happening hmm. um so that may be a fact <laughs> and that may be real but the truth is um they are loved the truth hmm. is they are fearfully and wonderfully made so I didn't create the truth but there's a truth that exists that when they come to know the truth and embrace it, they will become that truth. Interesting. So they're Over creating time. their own truth. Oh, the truth is there for us to read. Where, where do you get, where does the idea come from for the truth that we are fearfully and wonderfully made? Scripture. The Bible. The Bible. Is there anything in there that you have an issue with? Is there anything in there that I have an issue with? Yeah. No, I think everything is in there for a purpose, for correction, for encouragement. 
for guidance. Um, there's all a, there's a purpose for everything that's in there. If there's something I don't understand, mm -hmm. I ask God if, if now if I still don't get it, you know, he showed me, OK, I tried to show it to you, Miriam, uh, whether in a dream or whatever, through the Holy Spirit speaking to me, I still don't get it. I'm going to go to a trusted person that is farther in their faith than I am. Interesting. So God couldn't explain it to you. So a human being has to. So a human being has to. And that's it's, <laughs> it's set up to where we we lean on each other. I mean, even Jesus, he walked with people. You know, he wasn't alone in his. Well, in his I mean, how's he going to get his message out if he doesn't walk with people? <laughs> he gotta have, exactly. He's got to interact with people somewhere. So as pause. far as the Bible goes, I, I find a lot of things in there egregious. I find a lot of things in there abhorrent. Mm -hmm. um, we can, I mean, obviously the Old Testament, there's a ton of things in there mm -hmm. um, that I don't agree with and I think are despicable. First off, Leviticus 21.9, if a priest's daughter defiles herself and becomes a prostitute, she disgraces her father. She disgraces her father. She must be burned in the fire because she disgraced her father. Mm -hmm. These are these are God's perfect laws. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here I have an issue with. Killing witches. I mean, Leviticus 20, verse 27, you know, a man or a woman who is a medium or spirit among you must be put to death. You are to stone them. Their blood will be on their own heads. Um, stoning disobedient children. God drowns children. Um, God forces people to eat their children. Uh, is, God does a lot of horrible things in there. How how are we to know which part is true? Are these these acts that God is doing true? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the way I've come to understand Jesus and his role in our lives uh, and even the law, I think, well, there's like 700 laws, I think, Six written in Leviticus, yeah. Yeah. Um, is that we're imperfect. We live in a corrupt world. We cannot uh, uh, fulfill all of those laws. Um, and that God is not behind corruption is actually mankind. That is that they did all of the, it was mankind that did egregious things. Huh? I mean, right? drowning kids is pretty egregious blood. though, right? Say that again. Drowning kids is pretty egregious though, right? Uh, I mean, it, it is, you yeah. know, there's some things that God did in old Testament is like, oh my, my goodness, you know, um, <laughs> oh my, you, <laughs> oh, oh my, but I am, I am, you know, not Jesus came to fulfill the law because we couldn't keep it right. Like those who have sinned much, there is also grace as well. We so, cannot keep the law in its entirety. I mean, it's like 700, 800 laws. Well, the, the laws are ridiculous. Let's go off the bat, right off the bat. These laws are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, but but several places in there, it's stated that these are God's holy, righteous, and perfect laws. Mm -hmm. And God is Jesus, and Jesus is God. So these are Jesus's laws, and Jesus is God. So Jesus drowned all the children. Mm -hmm. We can't separate the two, right? I mean, who is who is Jesus and who is God to you? Who are these? These are they different? Are they the same? How's that work? Okay, well, the Trinity, the Trinity is three in one. So it's God the Father, uh, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yet they're they're one, and they they're all the same person operate, and they're all the same. That's how that works. So Jesus, Jesus came to fulfill the law, so that we're not no longer under it. We're no longer under that law. But the the law that doesn't matter if we're under it or not. The law was the law was a perfect <laughs> example of what God wants. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is to live in to to live in in him like operate in the way that he want the standard that he wants us to so that we can be free to believe in him to not serve false gods to not um like even when you look back at the old testament and you look at the the context or the lifestyles or the cultures uh, every people had gotten away from God, and then there are these severe like consequences huh. and yes, punishments like, from God. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, oh, he slaughters God. their kids in a bunch of them because they worship the wrong God. I'm so glad that I didn't live during that time. But you why know? though, <laughs> Miriam? That can't be a good thing though. This is this is the guy that that's mm -hmm. awesome apparently, but he punishes children for the sins of the father. He says so <laughs> in several places. That's that's what he does. He's a jealous yeah. God. He's a jealous God. And, and we see that generational sins can impact um, families and children and grandchildren. But God holds a grudge. 
I mean, you know, they, I don't know if you if you um, come to know this, but even doctors will ask, OK, uh, you know, did your grandmother have this? Did your grandfather have this? You hereditary. Know? Yeah. So God created hereditary diseases. Is that what you're saying? We live in a corrupt world. I'm not saying that God created it. It was somebody's decision huh. years ago that that created it. So we can create things. Well, God's not the only yeah. creator. We can create things. He made us in his image. And and there are people that are creating, I mean, what, mass chaos. There's murder. But <laughs> well, even, like, you know. There's a lot yeah. of church scandals and sex scandals, and those people church, are creating some, yeah, those, those there guys are have relationships with God. Absolute false teachers. And he, and he mm. says you'll know them by their fruit. They, mm. Yeah, there are all these things. Mm. You're absolutely right. Yeah, scandals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He doesn't step in though. He just lets it happen. Free will. Well, I mean, so when you say he he doesn't step in. Yeah. As a as a well, loving father person has a relationship with these people, mm -hmm. he allows mm -hmm. bad things to happen. And he doesn't step in. Well, we have free will. Well, you're telling me he he leads people. God drove people to certain decisions and to certain areas or to you. Mm -hmm. but he can't save them from being raped in church. His home, that's his home in his own mm -hmm. house. I mean, if mm -hmm. that kind of stuff was happening in my house, you better believe I'm stepping in. Mm -hmm. There's there's going to be some action. I'm not going to be like, well, eventually I'll get to it. I'll get to him eventually, you know. Mm -hmm. But if, if he confesses at the end, then he'll be in heaven in a relationship with me and I'll love him forever and ever, even though no matter what they did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't see any of that as a good thing, Miriam. Hope that makes sense. No, it makes sense. <laughs> it, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. Mm. What I will say is I have experienced um, a sexual sexual assault. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Multiple Oof. times, multiple times in my childhood. And it, it didn't happen at church. Mm. It happened in my house, you mm. know. Um, it's also happened outside of my house. And there have been times where I'm like, well, God, like, why did this happen? You know, why did this happen to me? I even I ended up writing a book about, you know, feeling like my body wasn't mine, you know, mm. like, um, and it just, even in my own journey of healing and just something being taken away from me, mm. um, I understood that moral corruption is not behind God, that it's mankind along with free will in, in the absence of his law and his love gets themselves into trouble. And now I become, I don't want to say the word victim, but I hmm. am now the recipient of someone just wanting to create a fantasy in their head. Hmm. As a child or hmm. um, as, a, as a woman walking about, like now I, I am in the, I became the recipient in, in those cases. I'm sorry. I, because we, you know, we also live in a, we live in a corrupt world. Well, who corrupted the world? Oh, Adam and Eve, you know, that whole story. Um, we, Lucifer fell from heaven. Okay. And for those that don't know the story, um, <laughs> you know, Lucifer wanted to exalt himself. And, you know, he got kicked out of heaven. He deceived Eve. Um, Interesting. And, and as a result came the, the mix, the mixture. It's not so much, it's so bad that you are aware of of good and evil, but now you don't know how to balance the two. You know, they, it's God couldn't give this them. This is my understanding. My control understanding over that. Oh, yes. So they, so Eve eats what? They eat the fruit. Adam yeah. and Eve they eat that yeah. fruit of no, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh -huh. Whereas they were just good. Right wrong. All they knew about was good. Oh, well, they knew good and evil beforehand. Mm -hmm. They knew good and they knew law and they know, I mean, they huh. knew what they told them not to do, but then they, mm -hmm. by their disobedience, it opened up their eyes to evil. Huh. Interesting. E evil, so evil, was evil created at that point when they ate the fruit? Uh, was it created? No. Okay. Well, where did evil come from? If God didn't create it, where did mm -hmm. it come from? If you say if God didn't create it, and I don't think it was created at that point. I think it was already created. Interesting. So God created evil on purpose. Free will. Free will is evil. 
free will isn't evil, but okay. free will in the absence of following God's law and 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 walking with him, you can end up doing evil things. Like in the absence of those things of those things, huh. evil so, can set in in the heart. So Satan sinned in heaven. So there was evil and sin in heaven. We have free will in heaven, right? I mean, if, if heaven's okay. a, a perfect place, we're going to have free will. We're not going to be robots. That's so are right. we able to sin in heaven? Well. Satan did it. Satan did it, and he got kicked out. Yeah, so we can sin in heaven? I would say, yes, he sinned, and he and there was a consequence. How is that perfect? If there's sin in heaven, how is it a perfect place? I, I, it's a perfect place, but he still had free will. Like perfect love also allows for free will to happen. And so that's we can my just live it up and sin it up in heaven, and we got free will. Thanks, God. Well, I don't know about living it up. You know, I think he 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 was <laughs> doing it up in heaven. What, <laughs> oh yeah, live, I mean living up, but in terms of sinning it up, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know about sin. So he got sinned down. You know, he yeah. got sinned down because he sinned. You know. So did God know when he created Satan that he was going to sin and cause the fall of man? I believe so. So why did God let him into the garden? Well, it wasn't blocked by anything. I mean, he he had the will to to move around on the earth, you know, and and that's where he went. I oh. believe uh, because of his you know, the internal uh, eternal damnation um, that is his sentence. You know, misery loves company. I'm going to take as many people as I can. You know? Why is God allowing that, though? God loves everybody. He wants mm -hmm. everybody to do good. Why would he allow the bad guy to convince mm -hmm. people to do bad things? Why not banish the bad guy to hell and leave mm -hmm. him there away from his children? That just doesn't add up to me. Why would he release the bad guy to convince his children. Well, he, he warned his children. He that, told clearly his that doesn't do very well. So why would he do it? He know that's not going to work. He knew it. But right <laughs> from the beginning, as he was allowing that snake to come into the garden, as <laughs> he was creating his deadly trees and placing them in the middle of the garden, <laughs> he knew exactly what was going to happen. <laughs> he still did it. If I knew that putting something in my kid's room or a bad guy in my kid's room mm -hmm, mm -hmm. would cause something such a so egregious as I'm going to have to have bloodshed for forgiveness after this, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I would not release a bad guy into my kids. I would not be like, free will. Good luck. I'll get him later. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I, you wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that because that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't add up, especially as a loving parent or a competent parent for starters. Mm -hmm. I mean, why would God do such a horrific thing on purpose? Well, well what, I, what I would say to that is it's not that he did a horrific thing. Mm -hmm. We made a horrific decision. But the choice, he knew the choices, though. He Yes, but his, it's. So whose his choice is it at that point? But obedience allows for protection as well. The world wasn't corrupt before they disobeyed. Yeah. And now, obey me or I'm going to let the bad guy in. I'm going to give him rule over the earth. Mm -hmm. <sighs> That's not a good way to rule things. With the president, he's like, all right, all right. So if you guys don't obey me as president, I'm mm -hmm. going to let the terrorists run, run over Texas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not my decision. You guys chose the wrong way. Mm -hmm. You guys didn't, didn't show me enough respect. You know what I mean? That just doesn't add up. That whole scenario, that just mm -hmm. doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's something mm -hmm. we wouldn't do as rational human beings. Mm -hmm. Most mm -hmm. of us, anyways. <laughs> There's, always <that> one <laughs> There's always that one person. There's always that one person. You know what? With Adam and Eve, yeah, you know, when you say babies, I, you know, yeah. It, the scripture doesn't like, I, I don't know the depth of how long they, they, they walked with God, you know, right, yeah. when they finally saw it when Satan, you know, came, was it uh, after they were what, uh, you know, I don't know what, seven, 200, <laughs> you know, 200 they, or they, 200 they, hours. Yeah. Like, right. Right. Like, like I, I, I don't know, but what I do know is that they, they, they knew God. Hmm. 
when God walked, what I think what Adam heard, you know, he said the voice, that's what he yeah. referred the to him as the, the voice. They understood and they knew the instruction, but they made a different decision. They were deceived. You know, mm. I do believe that whatever you go through. Okay. <laughs> Eve was then given discernment. As okay. a result of what she had experienced, because she was deceived, he said, "All right, you know the enemy, the serpent. He's out to 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 kill you. He's out to deceive you. Mm-hmm. But now, because you're deceived, I'm going to place in you, you know, discernment. So that way, you're going to be hostile towards him. Uh-huh. He's going to be hostile towards you. Uh-huh. But you're going to have also the ability to discern. Interesting." And many times it's, it's what we go through as a result, as, as a result of healing and transformation, I'm going to make sure my kids don't go through that hmm. as well. Yeah. I'm not going to release the bad guy for sure. I'm going to make sure my kids know better. And I'm going to make sure my life. kids yeah. are adequately supervised. I'm going to yeah. make sure, oh, know, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and also, ho- and, 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 and hope that, okay, my instruction hmm. also, um, is also protection mm-hmm. if they obey that instruction. If if someone tries to touch your private part, don't let them. Yeah. Always tell the teacher, you know. Yeah. And this is related scream. to <laughs> scream. My my own experiences, you know, yeah. what I've gone through. Now mm-hmm. there's in me like this discretion. I mm-hmm. now I operate with discretion that I didn't know I needed that discretion before because mm-hmm. no one told me anything. My mom didn't have discussions like that with me about mm-hmm. someone's supposed to touch you here. No one's supposed to do that, you know? So yeah. I unfortunately had, you know, like, so as a result of healing now, it's like, nobody's going to touch my kids. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna, yeah. You're going to make sure everybody stays away from your kids and you're not going to put a bad guy in the middle of it because you know that it's a bad idea. It's if a bad idea. No, it's a bad idea. We weren't, we aren't going to do it. But God knows it's a bad idea, mm-hmm. does it anyways, makes the fruit, doesn't hide it, puts it in the middle of the garden, lets mm-hmm. the bad guy in, and then punishes everybody for eternity for it. Mm-hmm. Like, here's, that doesn't make any sense. It's well, lashing here, out irrationally. Here's what you're leaving <laughs> out. I'm going but, to tell them why no one is supposed to touch you. I'm going to express uh, to them, don't let anyone touch you. Always, you know, even if they try to convince you, oh, mommy's going to, I'm going to kill your mom or I'm going to do this to your dad. Yeah. It, that is a lie. They're trying to deceive you, you know, so don't, don't feel like you can't oh. tell me anything. These are n- no touch zones. Right. <laughs> so there's an instruction that yeah. I, it's not just, oh, well, it, you know, of course I'm not going to uh, place someone in there, but people come, and, you know, it's, you know, we're operating with free will. So, mm. you know, uh, I mean, Anyone could come into the into the yard while my kids are playing, you yeah. know, a neighbor that I think I know. Yeah. But uh, unless I tell my kids instruction and they receive that instruction, you know, they may go take the candy from him or her. You know, they may go mm. and do this without because I didn't instruct them. Mm. So it's the instruction that that Adam and Eve didn't listen to. Mm. And God knew that. So he and he didn't change his instructions to make it better, to make it sound better. He's yeah. all knowing. Yeah, he knew everything. It doesn't yeah. make it any better, though. So yeah. as far as the punishment, though, mm-hmm. do you think God was fair with the punishment? I I believe he is fair. So one time they didn't listen, and they deserve an eternity of punishment. It opened up. It, they opened up themselves to now this mixture of both good well, and evil. Who gave him the tree? He, he planted it. Yeah, God he gave him the there. tree. So God gave them that, right? He didn't give it to them. He put it in the middle of the garden. He put it in the garden. And the shape of fruit, stuff they were eating. And Not rotting carcasses or spiders or, or something that they wouldn't eat. He mm-hmm. put it in fruit, tantalizing, delicious, shiny. We don't know what it was, but fruit. We don't something know, that right? they would eat. Obviously, something that they were interested in. Why? Mm-hmm. Why would he make it like that? Well, it, it wasn't until someone came with a convincing sound and a convincing voice and deceived them huh. that they chose to then eat the fruit. 
Because uh, aside from that tree, there also, a, 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 you know, th there was food in the garden. I yeah. mean, they, they were eating other things. Well, it's you know, your kids, they want needed. that Twinkie on the counter. You know, I don't want mm -hmm. dinner. I want that Twinkie. Well, my kids don't eat Twinkies. I don't even know where they came from. But, you know, <laughs> okay. chips. They only have the chips on the counter. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Those chips you can't have. And then mm -hmm. someone comes along and says, hey, go ahead and eat those chips. It's okay. Okay. My kids love chips. That's their thing. It's like crack to them. So, of course, they're going to open it up and eat it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should I punish them forever for it? Now they know right from wrong. They know not, not to do that. They know that's a bad guy and blah, 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 blah. So should mm -hmm. I give them a curse? Curse above, like, uh, I will, your entity and the woman, I will crush. Oh, where is it? To make woman, I will make the pains of childbirth very, very severe. With mm -hmm. painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. These are punishments from God. God mm -hmm. wants man to rule over woman because she ate fruit. Mm -hmm. I don't think these are good ideas, Miriam. I think these are bad ideas. <laughs> I don't think anybody should be ruling over each other in a relationship. I think that's ridiculous. It's an equal partnership, 100%. Uh, and then he curses all of the, the snakes. Cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. So God's cursing all the animals. Mm -hmm. He is so pissed off that they did what he knew they were going to do. That he's cursing all the animals. And then he curses the snake to eat dust. Well, snakes don't eat dust. That's mm -hmm. not really part of the snake thing. But... God didn't know that apparently. So why why are all of these punishments so severe? Could he not have just warned them? Could he have given them a second chance? Is God not about second chances unless something dies? I mean, mm -hmm. how does that work? Well, you know, but Jesus came and he he died for us. And and because of what he did for us, mm -hmm. there are second chances. Interesting. Well, and that was the redemption. You know, I think in New Testament, he's described as the second Adam. However, mm -hmm. um, he didn't put his will before God's will, almost like that whole depiction there. He he put God's will over his. Right. That's so he, all about him. Yeah. yeah. So now I can repent if I mess up today and I'm going to mess up because mm -hmm. I make wrong choices, you know, um, but I'm not I'm not too far from his love. Paul says, I'm convinced that nothing is going to actually separate me from your love, you know, and it was hell it, separate. It, like separate. It's our it's our sin that separates us from him. The things he doesn't like is what separates us from him. Our, our sin. Yeah, our, he doesn't, he doesn't, our sins. yeah, he doesn't like things like, like, just like blasphemy we, and not loving him and stuff like that. He, he gets very so, upset. He's a jealous God. He's described yeah. as a jealous God. Like, and, I don't know how that's even, perfect, though. <laughs> even with, I mean, law, following laws here keeps me safe. If I do not walk into a store and steal something from the counter, uh -huh. I will not go to jail. You know, like there is there is punishment, you know, that for breaking law. Yeah. So, Prostitution deserves fire. Um, disobedient children deserve stoning to death. These are God's laws. Mm -hmm, Should we mm -hmm. implement God's laws now? According to what Jesus did in the New Testament, we should not be stoning children. Like we should not be. Huh. Why be is that doing... not a good idea? Well, he came and paid the ultimate sacrifice. But it was a good idea at one point. His ways are not our ways. I, I, I definitely I can't not. Say, oh, definitely not I, I'm not God, Michael. <laughs> why? Why God? You know, like, I can't. I can't say that. What I. What I do. What I have done, though. Mm -hmm. Is because I've, I've read through the Old Testament and there have been times where I'm like, oh, God, why are there kids? You know, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, and it, it gets into that whole like debate of, well, if, if this kid, because of what their parent did, because I we even I even see that now, you know, mm -hmm. there are children who grow up to be an older version of their parents who were physically abusive, who was sexually abusive, who went to jail. And now like the they increase, you know, so like, were you thinking that, oh, because their their parents, um, uh, you know, lived immoral lives, the likelihood of that child doing that same thing? Like, what what is your thoughts? There, there are some things that are beyond me that I haven't completely tapped into. Um, well, God can change. I, I try to understand. But I try right. to understand it as best as I can from the generational curses and generational patterns. And mm. there's a tendency to grow up and do some of the same things. You know, there are some horrible things that, that has happened. What I am grateful for mm. is, is redemption, is restoration, 
Well, mm. I, you know, I don't have to go and and kill an animal <laughs> in order to pay for my sins. I can, I can ask God to come into my heart and to help me today, you know, and I could do it again tomorrow. And if I mess up today, you know, I get another try, you know? Mm. And so I live under grace versus the law. You live under grace because something has died. Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. The mm -hmm. jealous, angry, child-killing God wants bloodshed for forgiveness. Miriam, yes. would, would you slaughter the innocent to forgive the guilty? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Why not? Oh, I mean, I'm not God. I'm not God. The, and the way he sees things and he runs this world is is, right. is, way, is is beyond me. So I won't speak on something that I can't even understand. Completely. Right. It does not, does not compute with me either. Killing the innocent to forgive the guilty. It just doesn't make any sense. It this all-powerful God like, that can do anything. And it wasn't enough because we got <laughs> sin. Like we kept on sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning. Like all these animals oh, no. are being are crucified and babies are whatever, you know. And there, there are people that were also offering their babies. Not God didn't tell them to do that. He, they're offering their babies what to like different demon gods and little Yeah, babies. so God came in and they're killed burning. all their all their kids. That's what he did. I'm I'm saying that there were people who decided I'm gonna throw my baby into this fire so this uh -huh. These other small gods will be appeased and, you know, we can live, you know, so there, there was already, a, there's, there was evil that these people were manifesting because of what was inside of their hearts. So it's evil to kill kids. Yes. I mean. Yes. It's evil it, to kill children. It's it, evil to it drown is, children. It it's evil. evil to starve children. It's evil to send wild animals after children. These are all things God does. Does or or that's what does. happened in the Old Testament? Oh, no, no, no. He does. These are things he does. Several mm -hmm. places in the Bible, he drowns, he starves, he sends wild animals to kill children. So again, what I will say is New mm -hmm. Testament. You know, <laughs> Jesus came. Jesus love, came so it. we could have life and life uh, more abundantly. Jesus had to die. That comes. To, he had to die. Had like to we, die. God can't we forgive without like, it. We we wouldn't be under grace. We would still be under the law. Jesus did not die. Miriam, and so I can forgive you without killing something. I am a mere human being, a flawed, insignificant little speck. Yet mm -hmm. I can forgive you without killing the innocent. It's forgive so it. easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. like it's so easy. Why would God choose? To slaughter the innocent to forgive the guilty. Why would that be a choice? Well, I think if if you were to only see, you know, like I think other questions that need to be asked is mm. what what did mankind do after the knowledge of good and evil came in? What did mankind begin to use their free will to do? Because you see the laws that came into play, but what did huh. mankind begin to do? So that gives mankind, God an excuse to do it. Absence it's of God. Absence of Lord, I want to walk with you. I want to obey you. What I have that now, Miriam. Miriam, I have that now. I'm absent from God. There's no invisible man in my heart. There's no ghosts controlling me or telling me what to do in my head or nothing. There's none of that. Mm -hmm. Do I deserve mm -hmm. that? Do I deserve that punishment? Am I evil? No, I, you know what? <laughs> I, I can't say you deserve any punishment or anything like that. What I'm Thank what you. I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying, you're welcome. <laughs> what I'm saying, well, I mean, also morality. I believe morality hmm. is sketched into our hearts as well. That is like, okay. Who you sketched know, it there? God. God. The guy did. that drowns kids sketched morality in our heart. The guy that wants he, he innocent sketched... blood shed to forgive guilty people sketched it in our hearts. I don't see how. How, how does that work? <laughs> Mankind is it did egregious things. So did God. That allowed that, which is why the law even came into effect. So that we would know what sin was, because free will oh. and the absence of God, if you know, with depending on what you decide, <laughs> can lead to egregious evil things. So mm. my belief mm. is that mankind, free will. I don't want to obey you, God. They started killing babies. Interesting. 
they 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 started living uh, immoral lives, whether, uh-huh. you know, sexual perversion, or, you know, like I, that's what my belief is. Then and then the God did what? Effect, but we can't keep the law. So then, but then Jesus came. But then God did what when they weren't obeying? He killed their kids. When they were killing some of their kids, he came in and killed all their kids. I he will did. slay your cherished offspring, Hosea 9, 16. Mm-hmm. This is what he did. He, he wiped people out with their children. He, he ordered Joshua to slaughter children. Mm-hmm. Kill all their kids, even their donkeys. Like, what the? What? <laughs> evil donkeys and evil babies. God mm-hmm. wants them slaughtered. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think there's another way. I think there's a better way. And and I I find myself to be more moral and have the, have the high ground over God. Mm-hmm. I don't slaughter kids. I don't need bloodshed for forgiveness. Mm-hmm. That makes me a better person. Right off the bat. Okay. So that's where I'm at. That's where you are. Okay. <laughs> where, and where I am is, is really um, wanting to understand God from an, an open mind. Mm-hmm. Um, there is, there, there are evils that you don't even see. Um, hmm. We're not battling against flesh and blood, but, but ah. against rules of darkness, things in high places. I will tell you, you know, it's like uh, earlier we we're talking about okay, the presence of God and like this invisible thing. I've I've actually seen uh, demons. I, oh I, no, <laughs> I, I've I've seen that, um, and it and it came with certain decisions that I made that opened myself up to those things to come in. You know, interesting. It, I've I've done some pretty crappy things in my life. I've never seen a demon. I have seen a demon. What did it look like? It Gotta was know. well, you know, and and I I asked you to if you're asking me this to to yes. really okay to 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 be open to what I'm saying. Oh, of course, um, I'm. <laughs> all right, so and, and I do have to hop off because I'm actually I'm about to meet a, a client. No, you're good. Yeah, yeah. But Go um, there there was a certain decision that I made that. I, you know, I was instructed not to. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I did it anyway. So anyways, that night <laughs> I felt a presence in my room. Oh, there's that, there's that, there's that word again. There's that presence. <laughs> I felt a presence in my uh-huh. room. And um, as soon as I open up my eyes, I see this dark figure in the corner of my ceiling mm-hmm. that suddenly jumped on me to the point. Now I'm awake and I can't move. Mm-hmm. And I try to utter the name Jesus. Oh, and it didn't want me to. Okay. <laughs> so finally, I, I, I'm saying in my heart, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And finally it comes out and it, and it leaves. Uh-huh. And demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Even like other religions bring up this Jesus guy. <laughs> it is, it, it, it religions. is proven. Buddhism. Um, Islam. Do they bring him up as like the son of God, this powerful being? They dispute. So. They dispute yeah, that they he's the son yeah, of God. Just a but, guru. <laughs> but um, they acknowledge that he existed. You know. Okay. But even you know, there are individuals what's, that are still waiting. Um, what in Israel hmm. about his coming? You know, because they yeah. completely missed him. They were. <laughs> I mean, they knew. They knew the scripture. He should have been here Tuesday. I don't know where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they knew the scripture, even when, Je- when Jesus was there walking around, but mm. they weren't able to receive him. They're so connected to understand, like their understanding and their reasoning. And hold on, you can't be the son of God. That's mm. blasphemous. How are, you, how are you calling yourself God? They, it, they, they couldn't receive him. So even our heart posture impacts our ability to receive well, I mean, God did hard, harden the heart of the Jewish people uh, and their minds. Uh, was it Joshua eleven twenty? He hardened the hearts uh, to wage war against Israel. They destroyed. Oh no, it wasn't that one. Oh, there it is. John twelve forty. He has blinded their the Jewish people's eyes and deadened their hearts, so they can neither see with their eyes nor understand with their hearts, nor turn, and He would heal them. So that's not free will, right there. Just blinding the hearts of people that are stubborn. I'm sorry, because they're stubborn. You can't change hearts and minds. Are you not powerful enough? Anyways, that's a whole lot there. It's a whole other thing. You got to go. I'm, I'm it sorry. is a whole other thing. And that because, <laughs> that's because they're, they prioritize their own thinking and their own wisdom over his. And they were more connected to how, what their views of things. That, well, he yes, didn't he soften their hearts. To, he hardened them. He hardened them to even bring them back, which is grace. I don't, I don't, 
so that they will not understand with their hearts nor turn. So I don't see that as turning, but that's a whole other thing. Again, a whole other thing. This has been fun. We definitely have to do a part two. You're an amazing yes. guest. Thank you so Thank much. You. Um, <laughs> plug your stuff and any last words at the end here. No, um, uh, if anything, if, if any of this appeals to you, if you are looking, are you interested in Christian <laughs> counseling, if you've experienced church or, or any type of thing like that, uh, you could uh, reach me at bonus.defineyourdna.com and that's it. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Miriam. Appreciate the time. Take care. We'll stay in touch. Thank you. Bye. And that's all the show there is for you today. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard and want to help keep the recording light on, simply go to patreon.com forward slash BSW the podcast and sign up to be a supporter of the show. Your episodic tithes of a dollar or more will give you access to the patron feed, unaired conversations, early access to each episode, and much more. For the latest events, BSW swag, and a peek behind the scenes, head on over to the show's ever-evolving webpage at thebiblesayswhat.com. The Bible Says What the book is out. Head on over to thebiblesayswhat.com and get yourself and your grandma a signed copy. Thanks to the cosmic powers of the internet, it is now possible to buy me a beer or coffee online. Simply go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash BSW the podcast and click the appropriate buttons. If you can't support the show monetarily, please like, share, and or leave a review. As always, you can find me at the Bible Says What Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or Instagram pages. You can also reach me at BSW the podcast at gmail.com. And no matter which platform you use to listen to your podcasts, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on the next episode. Until then, would you kindly pick up your Bibles and read them? <laughs> I'm throwing my con my Conry out there. This is a little Conry. I'm really great with the personations. Can't you tell? It's Sean Connery. <laughs> you couldn't tell? Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like Sean Connery's in the building. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, man. I can do all kinds of voices. Let me do Mike. From in the beginning to the musical apocalypse, this is The Bible Says What. I'm your host, Mike Wiseman.